Hello again, I am Blunty, and this slim slab of onyx is the new Razer Blade, the latest evolution of Razer's high-end gaming laptop. Highest-end gaming laptop, as a matter of fact. And an evolution it is. Now, last year I reviewed its predecessor, and not a lot has changed at first glance. Externally, it's close enough to be identical, which is fine by me. As far as I'm concerned, the Razorblade is already one of the most elegantly attractive gaming laptops out there. It's slim, sleek, and keeps itself understated, resisting festooning itself with the cool but ultimately pointless blinking light shows that crawl across the much bulkier bodies of, for example, Alien wears wears. It's a beautifully slim 14-inch laptop. The surface is very smooth and very pleasant to touch, although it will need a quick wipe down quite often as it's a fan of attracting finger grease. Mine had the craziest ultra high def touchscreen, but there is also a model with 1080p non-touchscreen flavor. The Ultra HD screen is desperately sexy, but I have to admit it was a bit frustrating. Not by any fault of razors, no, their hardware is superb, but rather Windows 8's less than flawless handling of interface scaling of ultra-high-res screens. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. But beyond my Windows 8 issues, it is a touchscreen which again leads to it being quite reflective by design. This was never a real issue for me in day-to-day -day use, but those of you who take your rig to I don't know, coffee shops or brightly lit windowed offices, for example, will need to know about that as it could be a problem for you. Powering that crispy screen is NVIDIA's GTX 970M GPU. That's the big boy, which, as I'll show you in a moment, is a lovely, lovely thing. The rest of the main stats are rounded out like this. The keyboard is surprisingly good too, quite a lot like Apple's keyboards, really. And while lots of laptops are aping Apple's keys these days, Razer gets more than the look right. It's a very pleasant experience to actually use and type on and even game on. It has a really well-balanced travel and tactility to it. Sadly, like all of Razer's keyboards, whether they're on a laptop or completely separate devices, it features their rather ugly typeface branding, including the annoyingly single lowercase r surrounding by every other letter of the alphabet in capitals. I don't know whose decision that was, but I want to punch them, because it really, really bothers me. <laughs> the touchpad is very, very smooth, perhaps even a little too glassy for my taste. I think I said that last time, too. But it is responsive and large, and that's a wonderful thing. It is multi-touch, of course, but the hardware buttons down the bottom there feel just a tad on the spongy side. Again, for my tastes, maybe you're different, and it's hardly a deal color, just a little bit spongy. And frankly, when I was actually gaming on the thing, of course, I was using an external mouse anyway, so who cares? Now, on to the raw performance. Well, you can probably guess for yourself, but it should come as no great shock that after five generations of refining their Razer Blade designs, this one, of course, is the most brutal, ass-kickingly slickest, most powerful Razer Blade yet. <laughs> and yes, I know it might annoy some of the hardcore PC gamers out there. I know what I'm showing you is not the latest and greatest games here, but it is my personal stock measure for the moment, just to keep things consistent. Maybe I should upgrade the games I test with soon. Anyway, the Hitman Absolution benchmark was averaging just a sliver under 60 frames per second with everything maxed out at ultra settings. Meanwhile, Minecraft, and yes, I know it looks simple, it can actually be pretty brutally computationally demanding. And once again, with maxed out settings, with a high-res resource pack, and with SUSC ultra shaders chugging away, the blade still threw out a 30 to 50 frames per second result. That is impressive, believe it or not. Without the shaders, though, you're well past 120 frames per second pretty consistently, and in a more everyday practical use case, I spent a good couple of dozen hours with the Razer running Minecraft maxed out while OBS was encoding a 720p stream out to Twitch with ease. And even running Minecraft and the chat room thingy and OBS and the web camera and all the other ancillary bits and pieces I use while I'm streaming, I was still getting frame rates above 90 frames per second. That said though, I did eventually lock the frame rate down to 60, because if you just let Minecraft gobble up all the power it ever wants, the fans on the laptop do spin up, and while they're not screamingly loud, if you are streaming, as I was at the time, the background whine of these fans got a bit distracting for the viewers, as it is, well, it's audible. To try and give you some context for the level of background noise, this is me speaking in my regular conversational tone of voice, uh, using the onboard camera mics only, and you can well, you'll be able to very clearly hear the fan wearing. I can talk over it very easy, but it is 
one of those fan noises that is of a pitch and of just enough volume to be, well, what you'd call noticeable. Under 3D Mark, it scored just under 42,000 points, placing it well above the performance of an average gaming laptop and closing in on the high-end gaming desktop territory, with a score better than 69% of all results. Ha <laughs> ha, 69. <laughs> the skydiver tests were nothing to the blade, running it comfortably past 100 frames per second. Only the fire strike tests, meant to make dedicated desktop rigs sweat, gave the Razer something to think about, bringing things back down to a grounded 30-ish frames per second. So, we just talked about the fans, and yes, they do make noise, duh, they're fans, they're moving parts, they make noise. But, all of that power in a slim case, it's got to get warm, right? I mean, the fans can't be that big, can they? Well... No, they're not, and yes, it does. Near the hinge where the vents are, it gets pretty damn toasty, actually, almost too hot to touch. But the places where you actually touch while you're using the thing, the keyboard, the touchpad, the wrist rests, and all that kind of stuff, well, they'll get warm too, but never uncomfortably so, and never once in any of my testing was the heat generated a problem or an issue. It didn't cause any crashes, it didn't set my desk on fire, none of that kind of stuff. But you know what? If all you want are the numbers and performance results and, and, and benchmark tests, Google will point you to a drier source than I. What I can tell you after a couple of weeks actually using this thing, gaming on it, streaming with it, is that it is pretty damn fantastic, brutally powerful without being hideously thick, and really quite pleasant to use, except for Windows 8, which I have never ever liked. There's nothing I can do about that at this point. But hey, Windows 10 is around the corner and it will be a free upgrade, of course, so there's hope on that front. <laughs> and while the ultra-high-def screen is just all kinds of pretty, if you're just getting this thing for gaming, consider getting the 1080p version, as not having to push around an ultra-HD render will speed things up quite significantly as far as your frame rates go, plus touchscreens on laptops are still a bit stupid anyway. But if you're going to do more than just game, if you want to put all this grunt to work for you, creating media or fiddling with photos or editing video, as a matter of fact, snatch up the Ultra HD screen, of course, because, well, why wouldn't you? Either way you go, you're getting a very likable machine, built sturdy yet slim, and one that's going to easily kick around the latest AAA games with all of the pretty stuff turned up. Razer do want three and a half grand in Aussie money for it, which is serious gamer kind of cashola, but holy crap man, it is a beast and I want one. Especially considering the fact that my own gaming rig just kind of imploded on itself. Now, I can't afford it, but the want is very strong, I'm just going to say that much. <laughs> Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.